It's no secret that Africa has seen and carried out some very powerful mega projects, but just because a project has come to light doesn't mean it's useful or relevant to the purpose for which it was originally intended. In this video, we will learn about 9 mega projects in Africa that have failed miserably or were abandoned resulting in a waste of time, money, and resources. While some of these projects have fortunately failed, others are still attempting to gain traction while showing clear signs of failure. If you are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to receive more exciting and educative updates. Number 9, Lake Turkana Fish Processing Plant, Kenya. The project which cost about $22 million was designed in 1971 to provide jobs to the Turkana people through fishing and fish processing for export. However, the Turkana are nomads with no history of fishing or eating fish. The plant was completed and operated for a few days but was quickly shut down. The cost to operate the freezers and the demand for clean water in the desert were too high. It remains a white elephant in Kenya's arid northwest. Number 8, Lesotho Highlands Water Project. The project to divert fresh water from the mountains for sale to South Africa and for electricity began in 1986. They were funded by the World Bank, European Investment Bank, and African Development Bank at an estimated cost of $3.5 billion. However the electricity proved too expensive for most people, and the diversion of so much water caused environmental and economic havoc downstream. The development fund raised from selling the water was shut down in 2003. The courts convicted three of the world's largest construction firms on corruption charges and the project's chief executive was jailed. Tens of thousands of people whose lives were ruined by the diversion are still waiting for compensation. Number 7, Egypt's Tashka New Valley Project. Egypt's 90 billion South Valley project was planned to develop agricultural production and to create new jobs away from the Nile Valley. By creating a second Nile Valley the project was meant to help Egypt deal with its growing urban population and was described as the new era of hope for Egypt. It was intended to house more than 3 million residents and to increase Egypt's arable land area by 10% given that about 83 million Egyptians are densely packed into just 3% of the land which is arable. Therefore Egypt's planners are undertaking many projects to redistribute the population by creating new areas that can sustain life by diverting the Nile to the Sahara Desert in effect creating new oases. It started in the 1980s but it appears that not everything was taken into full consideration during planning for one of the western desert's high saline levels and the presence of undergoing aquifers in the area acts as a major hindrance to any irrigation project. As the land is irrigated the sword mixes with the aquifers and reduces access to potable water. In 2005 the government announced that it was abandoning the second phase entirely and that the deadline for the project's completion was extended to 2022. Number 6, Microsoft's Digital Villages in South Africa. On March 9, 1997, Bill Gates reportedly launched the Digital Villages concept in the black township of Soweto, which made headline news by its mass uprising. This township suffered and probably still suffers from extreme poverty. It was reported in the Spokesman Review, a daily newspaper in Washington, USA, that when Gates visited in 1997 a computer could cost as much as a house and few people would think of going online. The launched center was South Africa's first free access digital village, funded by Microsoft, local computer companies, and US development organization, AfriCare. The concept was that the $100,000 computer package, housed in the Chiawilo Community Center, should give the township's poor residents a link to the information age. As part of the opening, Gates observed a class from the local Elsin Jitty Primary School using computers for the first time, before reportedly telling a crowd of 200, Soweto is a milestone. There are major decisions ahead about whether technology will leave the developing world behind. This is to close the gap. But then this still became one of Africa's failed and abandoned projects as it was reported that even by 2013, there was hardly any evidence of the digital villages across South Africa. They worked well for a while but collapsed as soon as the sponsors stopped funding the activities. Number 5, Chad Cameroon Pipeline Project. The Chad Oil and Pipeline Project is a $3.7 billion development project comprising some 300 oil wells which are or perhaps were expected to extract approximately 1 billion barrels of oil over 25 years located in Chad's southwestern region it was one of Africa's largest public and private development projects. Once extracted the oil was to be transported by a 640-mile underground pipeline through neighboring Cameroon to an offshore export loading facility. 
Construction began in October 2000 and the oil was expected to flow in 2004. The Chad Cameroon Petroleum Development and Pipeline Project attracted worldwide attention not for the size of its oil reserves or the technical complexities of constructing a 1,070-kilometer pipeline from southern Chad to Cameroon's Atlantic coast but for the elaborate sponsored capacity-building initiatives designed to better the seemingly damaging effects that oil production has had in other sub-Saharan African countries such as Angola, Equatorial Guinea, Nigeria and Sudan. The project ran into trouble long before the oil started flowing in 2003 as construction activities rapidly outpaced the institutional capacity building initiatives designed to ensure that Chad used its forthcoming oil revenues for poverty alleviation throughout 2005 and 2006 as it dealt with a series of domestic and international political crises. The government of Chad also engaged a series of disputes with both the World Bank and members after this project the revenues was rather used for purchasing arms and personal profits rather than the intended purpose to boost both countries' struggling economies also with several companies and human rights sanctions related to oil hazards this project was doomed. Number 4, President Mobutu's Congo Airports. It was his birthplace deep in the jungle of what is today a democratic republic of the Congo the biggest country in sub-Saharan Africa and one of the world's poorest and longest suffering. In the early 1970s Batalite was a remote village of 1,500 people living in mud brick herds and not even marked on maps but thanks to unlimited hubris and reaches a new town was hacked out of the tropical rainforest with houses schools hospitals municipal buildings a five-star hotel a 3,200-meter runway for the supersonic Concorde and three palaces. There are no records of who built Mobutu's now-bushed airport but Concorde's needs a runway of just over 3,000 meters but Mobutu Airport has a runway of 3 200 meters with very little room for error and Air France Concorde commissioned by Mobutu to take him and his staff shopping in Paris in the 1980s had to land here in this forest airport there wasn't much of a plan B either to be quite honest there were very few runways long enough to accommodate Concorde at the time this is no doubt a useless project that was aimed for selfish reasons and didn't serve the purpose for which it was intended it was very unwise for President Mobutu to initiate such a project considering the very poor living conditions of his fellow countrymen President Mobutu felt the need to make his hometown popular and known worldwide and his thought was to construct a useless airport that didn't serve any purpose at all. Number 3, Kalamba City Angola. Just outside Angola's capital city of Luanda is Nova Cidade de Calamba a residential development of 758-story apartment buildings, a dozen schools, and more than 100 retail units, reports the BBC's Louise Redverse. The $3.5 billion development covers 12,355 acres and was built to house about 500,000 people, and this is one of several satellite cities being constructed by Chinese firms around Angola, writes Redverse. Angolan President José Eduardo dos Santos has touted the Calamba Social Housing Project as an example of his social policy, and he has brought international policymakers including Chinese Vice President Xi Jinping to the site. But the apartments in the complex cost somewhere between $120,000 and $200,000 according to online advertisements cited by BBC. Other anecdotal reports put the price of a three-bedroom apartment at about $250,000. None of which helps the average Angolan given the country's per capita GDP of $5,144 per year, according to the World Bank. And let's not forget that Angola serves as China's largest source of oil in Africa. The place is eerily quiet voices bouncing off all the fresh concrete and wide open tired roads there are hardly any cars and even fewer people but dozens of repetitive rows of multicolored apartment buildings they are shutter sealed and their balconies empty. Only a handful of the commercial units are occupied mostly by utility companies but there are no actual shops on site and so except for a new hypermarket located at one entrance there is nowhere to buy food. Number 2, Ghana's 200 million Saglami housing project. The project was begun in 2012 by the National Democratic Congress to ease the accommodation deficit in Ghana. The project was funded by Credit Suisse following a Parliament of Ghana approval, which was granted in October 2012. On January 4, 2013, the Ministry of Finance, the borrower, and the lender signed a facility agreement for the release of $200 million to fund the construction of the 5,000 housing units, Collins Douda who was the then Minister for Water Resources, Works and Housing signed the Engineering Procurement and Construction Agreement with Construtora OAS Ghana Limited, represented by Clocanas. 
The minister further disclosed that the sale had become necessary after actively engaging the cabinet, the Ministry of Finance, the Office of the Attorney General, and the Ministry of Justice on the completion of the project. The Saglami housing project was not going to be affordable according to Fatimadu Abakari, the Deputy Minister for Information. The project became a matter of controversy after the new Patriotic Party took power after years of abandonment. Samuel Ada Akia said the agreement was botched following acts of embezzlement by former NDC government officials. Out of the 5,000 proposed housing units, only 668 housing units were completed. The Attorney General claimed the completed houses were not habitable and also added that the project at the site was worth $64 million even though it was stated about $196 million was spent. Number 1. Ivory Coast Abandoned Capital City with the Biggest Church in the World Côte d'Ivoire President Hufu Etboini chose his birthplace of Yamasukro to be the site of the new capital city of his country in 1983. As part of the plan of the city, the president wanted to memorialize himself with the construction of the basilica. He is even pictured beside Jesus ascending to heaven in one stained glass panel. Due to the location of the basilica, it was dubbed by the media as, Basilica in the Bush. Hufu Etboini believed it would become a pilgrimage site for African Catholics. The cost of the basilica was met with some controversy globally when construction began, especially as the Côte d'Ivoire was going through an economic and fiscal crisis at the time. Pope John Paul II agreed to consecrate the basilica on the condition that a hospital also be built nearby. This hospital, whose construction was frozen during the politico-military crisis from 2002 to 2011, was finally completed in 2014 and opened in January 2015, for 21.3 million euros. Standing in Yamasukro today, it stands as a waste as only a minority of the population of Ivory Coast are Christians and only a few hundreds of people attend services at the Basilica. The project was rejected by many Ivorians as it came at a time of great economic crisis in the country. Thank you for watching to the end. Please do well to leave a review and comment on what you think about this video. Until next time, stay safe.